Hey DNA family, welcome back. Today we're here with Brian with Your View Racing. Uh, I'm gonna talk, we're here for a couple things. One is, uh, welcome back to the family. It's been a while. Yes sir, happy uh, to be back. Two, uh, carrying your apparel mm -hmm. that you're letting us, letting us carry. Yeah. Can we see some of it? Sure, of course. <laughs> Thank you, buddy. <laughs> That's for so, you. Yeah, this is the one, all right, cool man. So this is what we're carrying for Brian. We have it in t-shirts, sweatshirts. We also got a cool bag that you can get. I think we got other stuff on there, mouse pads, mm -hmm. things like that. Mugs, all sorts of other stuff. The hat you got too. that yep. are stitched. Yep. We can get a uh, fitted stretch or trucker. Mm -hmm. No, uh, I appreciate that a lot. Cause uh, we, um, you know, when we were doing the apparel runs, got a lot going on and I was taking them all in, putting them on the Excel spreadsheet and trying to keep up with it all. It was, it was a lot of work. So no, I appreciate you guys taking that on and yeah, so if anyone, be more efficient for everybody that wants to, uh, wants to get some apparel as well. Yeah. So come to DNA hyperformance.com, click on the apparel, you'll see your view and then you can get everything, pick everything, color, size and everything. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So the other thing we want to talk about the car, it's the main reason we're here. Of course. What you've been doing, where you're going. But before people that don't know you, mm -hmm. um, like I've said earlier, I know a lot of the last five, 10 year history, mm -hmm. but I don't know where you started with the car. What got yeah. you to get a car? What got you to get the Cobra? So, um, when did it start? Man, it's, it all started back probably when, before I got my license, um, we actually had our permits, a buddy of mine, good friend of mine at the time, Jeremy Egan, he's, uh, his family had a. 2003 Mustang GT convertible stick shift car um, and that's the car I learned how to drive a stick on and uh, you know we'd go out putzing around doing th doing things and that was kind of got me hooked to having a Mustang so then you know got my own Mustang at 96 GT um, after that a one Cobra and after that I had a 2003 Cobra as well, another Terminator. Oh, did you? I did. I didn't know that. I did. Only had it for about a year. I was uh, I was a little young. Really? A little, a little out of my league at the time, but I was able to enjoy it for about a year before I had to get rid of it. Um, All right. What color was that one? It was a black one. All right. As well. So it was a black 10th anniversary. Um, just your basic bolt-on stuff. Made about 470 to the tire. Um, On car, especially back then. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, and then after that, um, I had to sell that one, got put in a situation where I had to sell it. And then uh, <laughs> a couple months went by and I had to get something. So I found a, a guy that was selling a 99 GT for super cheap, put a Vortec on it, T56 Magnum, all that stuff. Oh, yeah. And ran that out until I decided to get back into the Cobro game. And so I've had this car about 11 years. What year? Uh, it's, this is an 03. No, what year did you oh. get yours? Uh, get this. What's the what's the math? What's 2011, 11 or twelve? Yeah, okay. something like that. That's when I got mine was two thousand twelve because I think that's when we all yeah started. Talking. It was very shortly after I had gotten this car is when um, we all started to start to connect a little bit. Yeah, networking yeah. on Facebook, Instagram. Yeah. Yep, the yeah. SBT performance pages. Of course, I think that's where I met like Colin and Jeff. Mm -hmm. Yep, because I think I met them first and then met tied in with you somewhere sure sure of course yeah I, de I definitely met you through them yeah um yeah so got this and it was just a ported blower pulley car at the time um okay but as everybody every cobra owner who who's in love with these cars the snake fight video with the kenny bell the tutu kenny bell yep the, the screaming is that what you got right, so immediately put a tutu kenny bell on it had on the car for about three years like that. Oh, all right. Um, 93, 85? Uh, it, was, it was 93 with a squirt of meth injection on it. Okay. Which is kind of, yeah. So but, like 60 pound injectors? Yeah, just 60 pound injectors, meth kit, um, stock pumps with a boosted pump, which is also right. kind of sketch, but right, we did right, it anyway. Band -Aid. And it made about 630 to the tire. It went, That's still good. Yeah, yeah. And we got to go in the high tens on IRS and all that stuff. And this was well before I got into the racing stuff. All right. Um, so, um, you know, you know, with the evolution of all these new superchargers, you know, I'm like, you know what? Everyone's talking about Whipple. Everyone's like, Whipple this, Whipple that. Yeah. So, um, got rid of my snake bite Kenny Bell dreams, and uh, I picked up a Gen 2 2.9 standard inlet. Okay. So this was, uh, you know, one of the first iterations of the 2.9. Yep. Um, ran that for about two years. Got a T56 Magnum in the car, put a solid axle in it. Um, tinkered around with it like that, and then... Um, you know what, what time frame was that? God, that was a 2016 time frame, 2015. All right. All right. Um, and then I, I had it, I had the standard on the car for maybe a year or two. Then I went to the Crusher. So that was where stuff started to get a little crazy because we picked up a good amount of 
power. I think that's what I remember you. That obviously we talked way before then, but yep. I think I remember the transition. Yeah. From the two nine to the crusher, I don't mm-hmm. remember the Kenny Bell being on this. Yeah, the Kenny Bell was well before probably we got really entrenched and became tight. Yeah, yeah. Um, so um, we ran that blower for for a number of years, good two three years. Um, stock motor. When stock motor ended up saying I'm done, boss, um, <laughs> uh, and got into the built motor for modular head shop. Um, that's when stuff really started taking off. Um, so the stock motor and you had the crusher, the 2.9 crusher. Yep. Stock motor with the 2.9 crusher. We got to go 979 at the time. That's good. Which was, you know, I thought was good. At the time, it was really good. I mean, we got a lot of guys now going faster in similar combos, but uh, yep. at the time, it was, it was really good. Um, and then that's when I started to pay attention to what, like, what other people are running. Like, you know, I, I, at the time, you know, the Alan Garretts of the world, the Rick Hacknesses of the world, all those guys. Like, I'm like, man, you know. I have something I can build off of here. You know, right. I can start, you know, hanging with these, you know, these well-known Cobra guys. And um, that's kind of what kicked me in the butt to start really getting after it. So um, uh, started taking it more seriously, getting to the track more. And we ended up with uh, the modular head shop, short block, stock heads, um, small custom cams, and the 2.9 Crusher. We ended up getting the car to go 933 at Mod Nationals okay. in 2018. And at the time, that was like... You know the fastest stick shift blower only Cobra right. at the time. Who was helping you do that? Uh, you know Colin, Colin Welsh, Jeff Chandler from Pure Performance. Yeah, those Pure guys. Performance. Those yep. guys. Yeah, man, those are actually the guys that got me into racing. Did they really heavily? Yeah. man. they're um, and they've been a huge bad help. influencers. They are bad influencers, <laughs> but hey, good for you. You're a part sale. Yeah, guy, so right. You're right? making money off of me. My favorite. <laughs> my favorite type of people. Exactly. Exactly. So, um, but yeah, I credit those guys to getting me, you know, entrenched in the racing stuff, man, and. Um, I, I've really, really had a good time doing it, and they've been a huge help, man. Yeah, they're um, always. I've Colin's done all the work on the cars that I've had. Yeah, Jeff's been a guy to reach out to for you know Q and A. Sure, um, sure. They're always willing to help. Fab work, things like that. Yeah. Um, so um, at the time, yeah. So that was 2018, and then that's when we got the attention of Whipple. Okay. Um, got in touch with Dustin. Um, it was, it, at the time, it was just Dustin, uh, Dustin Whipple. Um, and we ended up getting a Gen 4 2.9 Crusher on the call. Okay. Um, it was new at the time, so it was kind of, this car, this car along with maybe uh, Alan Garrett and one other car were like the, the flagship cars or like the cars that were used for like the testing purposes. Yep. So from 2018 to 2019 up until last year, this car was a flagship Whipple car. Stick shift blower. We did all the iterations of the, two, uh, the 2.9 Gen 4 and the, the Gen 5 3 liter. Yep, uh, right, yep. The different rotor packs, the different ports, the different, all that stuff. Going back and forth, sending data in, uh, to him and Nick. Seeing the power difference. Exactly. The torque curves, Boost all differences. That. You know, we, we work with Lydio over at Alternative yep, Auto. Yep. We would just rent dyno time and we would see what these changes would make. Um, and uh, then we would see how it transitioned to the track. Yeah. Um, so. Not a big dyno number guy, more of a track. Uh, no, you put guy. it down. You're, yeah. you're not a, you've never been the dyno right dyno queen but you got to use it as a tool of course to dial the car it's in. definitely a good tuning tool you don't want to you know be going 140 160 down the street i mean some people do but i uh it's not good practice i, I choose not to man and then you know I, once you get to a certain power level and you know it's harder to keep the tires planted down on the street right so right. and you don't get you know meaningful data when you can't load the tires and get everything loaded properly so yeah um so yeah fast forward from like 2018 to, to 2022 uh, focused on the six shift blower stuff for the Cobras, Gen 4, 2, 9, Gen 5, 3 liter, all the iterations of that. Um, and uh, had a good, nice, nice battle with my boy Alan Garrett up in yeah, Alaska. Yeah, you guys used to trade the crown. We used to trade the crown. We actually have a crown uh, that we, I, I had currently. Who still holds it? I still hold it. It's, uh, I've had it for about a year and a half now. I'm and what's still, that number? What's the so, number to beat? Uh, 851 at 160. It was at Mod Nationals 2021. Um, that is, uh, not only the Cobro record, but the mod motor stick shift blower record as well. So I'm hoping whoever's watching, there's some meat on that bone because if we would have kept this car together, it'd be better than an 851 if we kept it together another season. But, um, so Alan's got some big shoes to fill. He, he's, he's, (laughs) him, him and Zach Yasko have a really good shot at it, man. Yeah, no, they're they're good guys. They, they put in the work. Yeah. They're, they're very dedicated, very knowledgeable. They're not Um, a, uh combo copier and think just because they got the combo they're going to go run that no, exactly they put the work in they know 
what it takes to make it work. Exactly. It's more than just going on the dyno, more than putting down a number. You got to get that power to the ground. You got to get down efficiently and uh, efficiently, consistently, safely. Yeah, yeah exactly. Exactly. So, so let's put the video up of that, uh, yeah, that run. For we'll, sure. We'll have that in the video here. Yep, of course. So that's like a general history of the car. You know, started off as just a typical Cobro, Kenny Bell Dreams, all that stuff, and it spiraled. You know, after meeting good friends that I'm still great friends with now, spiraling into the racing stuff, and now I'm obsessed with the racing stuff. Man. Right, and uh, you got bit, got bit hard, man. So here we are. <laughs> so what made you go from Whipple to Turbo? So I just felt at the time um, I was just ready for a change, man, because it was, uh, you know, the car was always supercharged. You right. know, and then uh, working really, really hard for four or five years doing the developments, developmental stuff with the blower. Um, I was just ready to try the turbo stuff. Like you, like every Cobro guy who takes it seriously, they'd be like, "You'll know when you're ready if you want to go turbo." And I just knew when it was it was time. Right. Um, so, with addition to the turbo uh, that Jeff did at Pure Performance for you, uh, can you give us some detail on uh, the build here? Yep. So um, uh, the turbo is a ninety four one hundred two. Precision uh, ball bearing turbo. Um, the cooling system is uh, chiseled, 2,000 horsepower air to water core. Um, Phil Harple at Harple Auto Fab fabbed up this really nice custom box for me for the the air to water cooling fluid. Um, definitely, uh, he's a bang up fab guy, man. Like if anybody needs custom tank work or anything like that. Hit up Harpo Auto Fab. Um, he, he's doing a killer job right now for the Cobro stuff. Um, tube front end is Team Z, um, who's a, another partner of the car. Um, they've been real supportive to us. Um, you know, anything suspension, cage, all that stuff. Um, but anyway, um, so that's uh, the turbo side. Um, we got, we're on smart. We're on smart coils. Cars controlled by Holly EFI. Um, uh, the intake is a modified Sullivan intake with a CG Fab upper lid. Jeff helped uh, helped modify that and all that stuff. And then Jason over at 1320 Junkie Performance ported the lower Sullivan manifold. Jason's been a part of the program for quite some time. He was uh, he was doing um, a lot of the port work for the lower intake manifolds and other things for the blower combo. Um, and he's been a huge help with like suspension tuning and things like that. So um, he's been involved with the program still to this day, even. For a couple of years now, back when we were blower bros, um, but uh, the motor is a—it's a—it's a modular head shop built 4.6 liter, um, nine nine to one pistons in it, manly crank, K1 rods, nothing crazy, um, three valve block. Um, the heads on it are—they're—they're they're one of the latest and greatest sets of Jordan's uh, works of art that he puts out. You know, they're O-ringed and you know the oversized valves, all that stuff um his uh, stage four turbo cams um so jordan has been jordan thomas christy all those all those uh good people down in florida have been a huge help with the motor in this car for a number of years since back in 2018 when we started to chase records and start doing some things with the car they've been a huge part of the program so i uh, also want to thank them for their help um but uh, uh, the, the alternator, that, that's a DNA High Performance Nation alternator right there. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. So, so go to DNAHighPerformance.com. Yeah, that's it. Get that's... your alternator <laughs> for your nations. But we've been running nations. Uh, we've been working together on nation stuff for a for while, while now. Yeah. Yeah. yeah uh, we started off with the 200 amp that a lot of the Cobra guys buy. Um, yeah, you refer a lot of guys to us. And they then want the, the Brian Crane combo. They want the Brian I Crane said the combo. the old one or the new one? <laughs> yeah, which one do you yeah, want? Yeah, which combo? <laughs> Supercharged or turbo? Yeah, as a matter of fact, this when we did the belt routing uh, change for the uh, blower stuff, this was the same alternator that we relocated down to where the AC was. So this, this exact alternator was used for the blower combo as well. And it's been kicking ever since. Like, we've never... 
Dude, we've never had a problem with the nation's alternator. No, a lot of guys out yep. there, the the Cobra alternators are kind of the gremlin. Yep. You know, there's a few companies that try and say that they're the alternator company to go to. Yep. But I've had a lot of nations, I haven't had any complaints. Yeah. There's a couple of guys that may say that the regulator, they might have an issue with the regulator or something like that. But if your car is, you know, you got the car wired right. Yeah. It's a good, it's a good alternator, man. Yeah. Um, we we've not had any any issues with nations. Um, they've been fantastic for us. Um, Think we can uh, put the car on the lift? You bet, see man. The underneath. Yeah, you bet, dude. All right. So under the car here, um, you know everything that we run is pretty much Team Z um, for suspension and whatnot. Um, the the front struts are Viking Crusaders. My boy John Pavia, he helped me out uh, with these, getting them special radial valved um uh for what we're doing with the car so um these are uh radio valve uh crusaders um k member is team z um transmission um this is uh you know if you're stick shift racing um transmission's a kind of a focal point um donnie walsh over at dnd performance has been a huge help since we started to do face plated stuff um the cars had Standard out of the box magnums in it for a while, but um, uh, two years ago we decided to go the faceplate route, and he's been a huge support system once going the faceplate route. Um, so it's a it's a Liberty Gears gear set, you know, and all those special tricks that they do. Um, but he's been real helpful at the turnaround times and uh, uh, keeping the keeping the program rolling. So I can't thank him enough for that. What uh, cl what clutch you got in there? So right now it's a, it's um. It's a long style adjustable clutch in it. Um, some people like to call it a cheater clutch, but man, if you- So you gotta have a lot of time to uh, get that clutch dialed man, in. Man, I tell you. And then if the track conditions change, you're back under there dialing it in again, right? <laughs> well, it, it depends, because you can lower launch RPM and, and get by with some, you know, in certain situations, but yeah. you know, this trans has been in and out of the car so many times and uh, you know, just, just setting up this clutch to work efficiently and properly, um, yeah, you wouldn't call it a cheater clutch if you had to do it. Right. Yeah, it's, it's, and we're still learning. You know, we're on year year three of an adjustable clutch, and we're still learning and still figuring out gremlins and figuring out ways to improve. So, um, but uh, yeah, so uh, face plate T fifty six T fifty six Magnum. We got a strange chromoly drive shaft, and What's then the uh, drive shaft. Oh, uh, the loop. It's a Stifler's. Stifler's. It? Yep. Okay. Stifler's drive shaft loop bolts right to the trans. Really, really nice piece. Um, and then as we go to the back, um, all Team Z, everything in the back. Um, you know, the brace kit, uh, front, the front brace kit, the bottom brace kit, upper and lowers, uh, anti-roll bar, everything's all Team Z. Um, shocks are Mensker radio valve um, shocks. And um, the, the, this has been a, a new addition for 2023. Um, you guys were nice enough to help us out with uh, this uh, fuel lab. Uh, six, uh, golly, was it six gallon per minute pump, uh, brushless, both filters and all the lines. You guys helped us out with all that. I think we and, got you that over the winter. Yeah. Yeah. So that was, um, that was a huge upgrade to the car. Um, you know, as long as, I don't know if we're ever going to tire out that pump doing what we're doing. Um, and, uh, we also added the behind bars race cars, uh, sump tank. So we can run a little bit less fuel, try to save a little bit of weight in the process. So um, you know, this whole combo has turned out really, really nice. I'm really happy with it, how the hoses look, how everything's ran, uh, the fuel lab stuff, the touch and feel, the quality is fantastic. So um, yeah, the fit and finish looks really good. Yeah, it's great, man. I mean, I'm happy you guys are able to offer that because that's this is really, really nice stuff. Um, with the Holly, you can tr you can control the speed. You can either pulse with modulate it run a low speed or at a certain, you know, TPS uh, percentage or whatever, it'll switch to high speed. So you go low speed, high speed. Oh, nice. You know, yeah, it's a, it's a really, really nice setup. Um, so, um, and then of course, trailer hitch. Uh-oh, little drag and drive. Little drag, oh, dr no, you got, there, there's a correct way to say it. Uh oh no, what yeah. is it? Politically like, correct. Poli po politi politically correct. Uh, dragon drive, like you know, like a dragon. Oh, like dragon. You're dragon. You're dragging something. Yeah, dragon oh. drive. Um, so um, yeah, we're doing the six summer uh, dragon drive event uh, next week. Uh, we leave actually Saturday, 
And my boy Alan Garrett's flying all the way down from Anchorage to come be my co-pilot. So it's going to be... Well, that'll be fun. We'll have to catch up after that. Yeah, we certainly will. We certainly will. So yeah, a lot of the prep, you know, these last couple weeks has been for this event. And um, uh, it's been kind of a struggle, but we're going to show up and give it our all, man. We want to try to put on a good showing for everybody. So, All right. Um, so with the car, what kind of horsepower are you making? Last time I was on the dyno was when the turbo kit and all that stuff was just done. And 26 pounds of boost, the car made 1350, I believe. Okay. Uh, so since then, you know, obviously at the track, we're, we're up arrowing and all that stuff. So, you know, um, when, I, on the 796 pass that I made, that's the best the car's done. So, yeah, what, what, so 796? 796 at 176 was the best pass the car's made so far, and it had to have been over 1,400 somewhere. Yeah, that, that's yeah. moving. Yeah, so. Um, so what, what's the cage started at? Cage is only started at 850. All right. So um, So you're dialing it down? Yep, so for the Dragon the dragon Drive. Yep. So uh, for six summer, um, you know, we're only going to be able to run 850. So that's been another struggle. Has been trying to dial in a tune up to where we slow down and not look like a puppy kicker. Right. Yeah. Right. So we're trying to, you know, run, run eight fifty consistently. Run, run, try, we're, we're trying to get as close to eight fifty as we can, but hitting all four gears, going all the way through, not lifting. Not right. Doing right. It's fun. Yeah. That sucks yeah. having to get out of it. Yeah. Or hitting the brakes or whatever the hell you want to do when you're puppy kicking. But anyway. All right. So. Um, yeah, we uh, we've been trying to dial it back, and that's been a little difficult too because we had a lot of data for any everything quicker than it is you got license this year do you have to get license every year nope nope um it's uh every well you you can either do one year or two year renewals but okay. once you're you do your six passes the renewal process is a lot easier all right yeah because i went and saw you the one day yep yep you, went, you did the is nhra yep NHRA, yep 850 yeah well it's not like an 850 i believe it's I'd have to go back and look, but it's like it's uh, seven fifty, I believe, to nine ninety nine is like the range. So okay, like, I'm you my just license have the car is, needs to be certified. The car is not, but you're certified spend, to yeah. run seven fifty. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, that's cool. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. So, what's the plan for this season? So, first and foremost, six summer Dragon Drive that's coming up next week. I mean, you're leaving what today? I leave Thursday? Saturday. Today's Thursday, June first. You're leaving Saturday third. All right. So um, I'll you're heading hit, out by yourself to meet up with Alan. Yep, I'm picking him up at O'Hare over in Chicago, and then we're going to finish out the drive and shack up Saturday night and get out to Cordova on Sunday for tech and test. Uh, get teched in, maybe make a test pass or two, but we're hot and ready on Monday, man. Monday the fifth. So we need him getting you a video of you rolling up, picking him up from the yeah from the airport. <laughs> <laughs> See this thing pulling up. Yeah, well, the jalopy on the trailer, exactly. You know, right, right. trying to stuff it all into the trailer, but. Uh, but anyway, um, yeah, so we're doing that. So what does that consist of? What are the races? Where are you going? So we start off in Cordova uh, on the Monday the 5th. Okay. Um, what you do is you go you each track each day for a week, and, like, you turn in your best time slip, and, like, you're trying to get the best average that you can. All right. So in this case, since the car can only go 850, I can't turn in the time slip faster than 850. So I'm trying to target 850 the best that I can. And uh, try to get the best average closest to 850. So if it so, runs quicker, you dial it down. If it runs too slow, you dial it up. Yeah, in a sense. But, like, honestly, like, you know, anyone that does these events will tell you, you know, going fast is one thing, but you got to make it through the week, too. So, you don't be breaking shit. Right, exactly. So um, my game plan is, honestly, if I run anything between an 8.5 and an 8.9, I'll probably turn the slip in and go to the next track. Because I want to make it through the week. That's right. like So I'm, how many are you hitting each week? And what's, so what's the... So you start off in Cordova on Monday. Uh, you make your pass. You drive out to Byron, Illinois. Byron's one of the other tracks that you race that. So we race that on Tuesday. All right. Wednesday is Great Lakes Dragway in Wisconsin. Thursday is I think it's called Tri State over in Iowa. Okay. And then back to Cordova on Friday. So you do you come around full circle. But basically, you run your pass. You drive to the next area. The Are there next, stops you have to make? Yes. Yes. Like. The, like Almost like a scavenger hunt. You got to. Well, yeah. You have to hit certain air stops. Or it's like a checkpoint. It's like checkpoint. a checkpoint. Okay. So like you have to take a picture at the checkpoint and yeah, kind of like a scavenger hunt. Like, hey, this is where we're going. I went here. Yep, and prove that you were there and all that, and then go to the next track the next day and get it done. So, all right. So do that for a whole week. So how many tracks you end up hitting? Four. Four. So Cordova, Byron, Great Lakes, Tri State, back to Cordova. So four tracks, five races. Four tracks, five days. And then on the fifth day is so what's? How do you win it? Like you, you just got to get to your best average. Well, so for me, um, that's why I'm trying to target eight fifty. Um, 
There's other guys that you got Jeremy Holland, the Flat Fox, one of my favorite cars, one of the coolest dudes I've met, uh, you know talked to online. Yeah, haven't met him yet, but I'm looking forward to meeting him. But dude, that car's been 7:30 at World Cup. That car is super fast. It's certain to go fast. So he shows up and makes it through the week. But that, if him, but if you're 850 and he's 7:30. Mm -hmm. He can still beat you and win. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Okay. Yeah. It's, so it's not really like a bracket race. No. Or, you get you or, can you can turn in a time slip that uh, that's as safe as what your car can do. So yeah, I'm eight fifty. I can't go fast. With okay. Car. Yep. So Jeremy, he can go super fast. So if he if he if he goes every track and is is consistent it, faster than an eight fifty and makes it through the week. Well, people know. I mean, to hit yeah. to do five races back to back to back. Yeah, it's a lot of work. Five to, plus you're driving there. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. So, I could see that, you know, these, these cars obviously are built to run, but mm -hmm. to be a daily or kind of like a driver. And yep. How many miles do you think you're going to be putting on? Uh, I think it's about 600. Round trip? Yeah, yeah. So this was a Is that including driving to O'Hare and driving back home? No, no, no. So we start at Cordova. Uh, so the, the, the mileage starts at Cordova. Right, right. Basically. So you'll have 600 miles with that. Yeah, I think it's like 500. I, I have to double check, but it's only like five or 600 miles for the whole spiel. All right. And then um, the drive there and drive back from? Well, yeah, on the trailer you know, and everything. 12, that's 1,500 miles. Yeah. We got a lot of mileage in on it. So. All right. Think we can hear it? Is this for the Dragon? Uh, the Dragon Drive. The, we're gonna shoot some fire. Mm. If, if not here, we'll shoot this kind of fire. Let's do it. <laughs> Cheers, brother. Good luck. <laughs> ah. <laughs> oh yeah, baby. All right, cut. You like that? <laughs> So what kind of wheels and tires are you running? Okay, so the fronts are well the Lumistar 2.0s. Um, I don't know a lot of the a lot of the Musca Mustang guys like them. Um, you know, all platforms like them. But I mean, it's hard not to. It's it, it's it's common, but there's a reason why it's common. They yeah, they're a badass wheel. They look light. fantastic. Yep. And then we got the N the M and H uh, front runners on there. You guys were 
awesome at getting those, especially at a time when no one had them. Yeah, so, tires tires have been very scarce. Yeah, getting the right size and uh, makes. Yeah, the 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 ones I had on it before they were from like 2015. I'm like, I gotta get these. I gotta get these tires done, and you no know, one had them, but you know, I you know when we talked, you had them, and it was like we had to get them. So. Thank you for that. And then, uh, what color is this? What color wrap? Yeah. So the wrap is uh, it's called Gloss Glacier Gray by 3M. Um, my main man Brian Reed. Uh, okay. So he wrapped the car, but he does more than just wrap cars, man. This dude's been this dude's been a huge, huge help. Um, you know, not only you know just the, the the daily ins and outs of this car on the ground at the track, lining me up. You know, going over videos, going over data. Man, that guy, he's been he's been rock solid, man. I couldn't have I wouldn't be where I am with this car without him. So but yeah, he's the one that wrapped this car. Um appreciate you having us out here today, letting us see your car, bring it to your house. Um I know we're gonna catch up later. You and I are doing the dragon drive for Milan and Lapeer this summer. Heads up hustle. Yep. Okay, heads up hustle. Yep. yep. Um so we're obviously gonna get more content then. I yep. wanna talk to you, catch up with you then. Yep. Find out how uh, the dragon drive that you're gonna be doing this week goes. Mm -hmm. Um so be safe out there. Hope you win. Good luck. Um anything for the closing comments here? No, nah, man. Just uh, you know, appreciate you guys coming out and um, you know, every you know I know there's people that don't know me that are watching us right now, but for those who have, you know, thank you for all the support over the years. And, you know, you guys have been a huge help to this program over the years as well. And uh, just, you know, it's super appreciative, man. You know, you can't do this stuff alone. It's yeah, very, no, I appreciate it. It, it takes a team, it takes a family. It, 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 and I'm glad you got, you're got you a part of it and letting us be a part of your uh, program. Of course, of course. Yeah, absolutely. Looking forward to what's to come. All right, man. Well, good luck, and uh, I'll see you back in July. Sounds good.